myself. I actually had a, an experience when I was uh, in medical school myself. I lost my mom to cancer while oh, I was in medical school. I'm so sorry. Thank you. I had to be the one that asked the residents to stop doing chest compressions to try and attempt to bring her back because it was far gone and there was limited oh. benefit at that point. And we were waiting to fill you, out. So you were with you were with her when she. Yes, oh, like the whole the whole I'm process. So Witnessing that and then waiting to fill out papers, mm. death certificates, all these things with my father, um, we had to wait a long period of time. So I went to go check in with the nursing staff why it's taking so long. Can we speed up the process anyway? And they're all laughing and having a good time in, in their back room. Mm. And it created a learning moment, mm. an anger moment and an understanding moment, mm. like a growth moment at all at the same time. Mm. That was in um, Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital, which is a cancer mm -hmm. hospital in mm -hmm. New York. Mm -hmm. So they're experiencing death in the ICU quite often. Mm. So they can't be the bearers mm. of everyone's pain all mm. the time because they can't last. Mm -hmm. So they need to have fun in the, but hearing that laugh is the last thing you want to hear. Of course. So what I took away from that was when I was a resident, and I was working in the ICU and I saw my fellow residents laugh somewhere in the vicinity of families that I told them how I felt just sharing my journey. And it created a really good learning yeah, opportunity yeah, from yeah. such a dark time. That reminded me, my, my wife lost her brother uh, a long, uh, almost 20 years ago. That feeling of she remembers waking up the next day and just everything life is, every, for everybody else's life is going on as normal. Yep. And there's that odd, like, don't you know? Yes. What's just happened to me? Like that everybody with loss goes through that. Yeah. Yeah.